In the last lesson, what we did was introduce the topic of moral relativism as the kind of broad structures of ethics that we can actually explore um, for the purposes of the philosophy of ethics, essentially. Now, we've been talking about the sort of two broad camps in which you can actually derive uh, meta-ethical claims, normative ethical claims, and also applied ethical claims. And these are, of course, the moral absolutist theories, and then we've also got the relativist theories. And in this lesson, we're going to unpack in more detail the relativist theories, um, looking specifically at the concept of cultural relativism. So having introduced the subject of moral relativism almost as a counterbalance or a counterexample to the concept of moral absolutism, it's important that we look at a variation of moral relativism and the variation that we're going to go for is the concept of cultural relativism. So in the most simple explanation, in the most simple um, way in which we can describe it, cultural relativism is the belief that morality can be described through the collective beliefs of some kind of culture or society. Now, how we define that culture and society is something that we can obviously debate about for um, years to come, essentially. But just that if we have a culture or a society, that you can actually derive a certain amount of, um, of shared moral understanding uh, within that culture and society. And the reason why this is relativistic in nature is because the different uh, applied ethical principles that you can have can vary from society to society. So this is not to suggest that the values of one society is necessarily better or superior or more moral than the moral values of another society, but just simply that they share different moral values. And this is actually the fundamental key point of, of cultural relativism. It is not making a claim as to the importance or superiority of one cultural value over a different cultural value. It is simply accepting that there are multiple different cultures and societies in the world and that they may share different ethical principles and moral values and that there is nothing necessarily wrong with that different, uh, the, those different values and the way in which that is um, established. Now, within cultural relativism, there are four distinct variations that we can use to apply in more detail and not just look at the how in terms of how societies and different cultures develop their own moral frameworks, but also the why, the why this is the case. We have the diversity thesis, the dependency thesis, an idea known as pyramid relativism, and then we also have the concept of conventionalism. And the rest of this lesson is going to be looking at the rest of these different theses and talking about the different uh, variations within them and what they, what they mean. So beginning first with the diversity thesis. According to the diversity thesis, ethical rules will differ from one society to another, and the reason why this is the case is because of the unique historical developments of the societies in question. The reason why we have a different moral framework for one society versus a different society is because they are both, for a start, they're different societies, and different, different societies uh, develop using different histories. The history of, for example, Germany is very different to the history of China, which is also very different to the history of the United States. Even in a more micro level, the history of one society at one part of a country, so the history of, for example, London, is very different to the history of Scotland in terms of uh, within the same country. As time passes and as society is developed, uh, the formulate uh, there is a formulation, sorry, of unique ethical systems and theories on the shared basis of their historical understanding and the ways in which their history and, and other factors have developed with their kind of beliefs. And this was a thesis that was presented um, quite heavily and quite strongly by sociologist Emil Durkheim, who in his work, The Elementary Forms of Religious Life, cited the uh, idea of Australian um, Aboriginal culture as an example of how different societies develop and how different cultures develop. And this is done on the basis of certain historical factors and maybe sometimes certain geographical factors so for example one society being at one uh, living or existing in one area of the world compared to a different area of the world may have an impact on the way in which their society is developed but how these kinds of things can create different cultures and different ethical cultures and this is how we get to a relativistic standpoint 
According to this thesis and the theory that was presented by Durkheim himself, the Aboriginal cultures of different groups were unique on the basis of their particular geographical sacred spots. So within uh, Australian Aboriginal culture, there are of course maybe different uh, cultures that exist, of course, uh, as they uh, as the different um, societies develop within different regions. But they are different, not necessarily just on the basis that they are um, they are historically different in terms of the way in which their hist histories had um, developed, but in also in terms of their geography, where they actually are positioned in the world, or in, within this example within Australia more specifically, can actually have an impact on the kinds of moral values that are established by that society, and that those moral values may differ from different moral values of a different Aboriginal culture. So this is where we start to see the development and the creation of morality out of all of these different theories. A second understanding is known as the dependency thesis. Now this is similar in the sense to the diversity thesis, but there are a couple of different very key ways in which we have um, a separation in terms of um, uh, where they part in terms of the theory. This is a theory that was supported by philosopher William, Gray, uh, William Graham Sumner, who... Um, believe that society is dependent on a whole host of different factors and influences. So it includes things like aspirations, environment, historical circumstances, etc, etc. So you can understand how this is linked some way to the, the, uh, the diversity thesis, how we can look at things like environment and geography and historical circumstances to come to some kind of conclusion as to the, um, the, as to the ways in which different societies develop different moral frameworks. But the dependency thesis takes the view that there are other factors that depend on this creation of these different uh, moral values and that there is a whole host of different societal influences that can be tied into this concept so it's not just history it's not just geography but it's also the aspirations of a society it's also the environment that the society grew up in individuals will develop personal moral codes as well so it's a lot more individualistic in this sense and they'll make these systems based on their own circumstances and from there societies will accumulate into the beliefs of these common laws and traditions that are societally approved so the dependency thesis takes the view that there's a much more micro um, a much more microcosm in terms of the ways in which these moral values actually spring up they actually spring up on a very individualistic perspective people will look at their own um, circumstances, their own historical circumstances, their own um, societal circumstances, or maybe their class circumstances, and they will develop from them personal moral codes and systems, which will then be shared by other members within that small subgroup within the society. And that then, as these values grow, societies will start to accumulate these beliefs into common laws and traditions that are societally approved. Now, this means that there are no moral absolutes in these societies, and this is why they are likely to change dramatically over time. And we can see how we, this can explain how societies and the moral values of certain societies have changed over time. If we take, for example, society in, the, 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 in Great Britain, over the last few thousands of years that England and Britain and Scotland have um, been around, of course, the different moral values of these different societies have changed dramatically. Of, uh, one of the examples of course is the example of slavery slavery was something that was accepted as a moral uh, morally righteous thing that can be done for a lot of the history of great britain and of course was only outlawed um in terms of the history of britain relatively recently the same can be said for things like capital punishment same can be said about things like um, bigoted views such as racism and homophobia etc etc so the idea that these societies will start to develop and change over time in terms of their moral values is something that is supported by the dependency thesis. And there is plenty of examples that we can use to support this thesis as well. The penultimate theory is known as pyramid relativism. And according to pyramid relativism, societies will start with a number of certain basic moral assumptions and basic moral codes. And these moral codes, according to pyramid rel relativism, almost represent the top of the pyramid of morality, if we can describe it. That when it comes to moral principles, there is always a starting point that exists. And this starting point is at the center of these um, relativistic societies that have different moral codes. And but from there, we start to see um, a number of different moral frameworks being built. So 
these um, fundamental principles may be positive in nature. So, for example, they could relate to things like love and justice, or they could be negative in nature. They could talk about the banning of certain things like murder. So murder was something that was uh, in British society has been morally wrong for the vast majority of the history of Britain and England. In fact, you might think that it was more of a free for all back in the day, but there are very, very old codes that exist that clearly state that morality. Uh, the morality of murder and the uh, as i should say really the immorality of murder these moral codes could be based on religious sentiments you could have the top of the pyramid being for example christian doctrine or or islamic doctrine that that hands down a number of different moral principles so for example the 10 commandments might be the central point in which we um, start our our theories of morality and then from the top of that pyramid we start to develop other moral codes out of that theology that's something that has happened a lot within Europe and within the Middle East in terms of religious um, Im influences on morality. The final of these ideas related to cultural relativism is known as conventionalism. Now, according to conventionalism, uh, moral rules, sometimes described in this tradition as conventions, will emerge on an ad hoc basis. What this means is that they do not occur on the basis of some shared moral belief within a society, but rather as a reaction to the events that take place in the moment. This is a very interesting theory, because what this theory tells us is that societies will develop historically, but within each of these societies, different events will take place. There might be certain um, events that take place on a natural basis or as a result of societal action, and that from these different bases of power and these different actual events that take place, we start to see the emergence of moral principles and moral beliefs spring out of them, either as a reaction to some inherently immoral action or as a reaction to some inherently moral action. So, for example, this is a this is can also be tied, in fact, actually, to um, how some people believe law is developed. Law is also developed in some regards to uh, as a reaction to a number of series of events. So, one of the um, things that we can talk about, for example, is um, pick, plucking something out of thin air. The creation of the Good Friday Agreement was a treaty that essentially or an agreement between um, the different parties between um, the groups in Ireland as well as uh, within the United K within the rest of Great Britain sorry and the idea with this is that this was a reaction to the 40 or so years of violence that had taken place within Great Britain and within Ireland and Northern Ireland um, in the period that we know to be the Troubles so we could argue that the the idea of the Good Friday Agreement was a legal doctrine that was um, a reaction to the concept of the violent immorality in inherent in the kind of violence that existed um, with the Troubles. You could make this claim for a number of different things, and you could make this claim for a number of different moral beliefs. OK, so maybe some people don't believe in the... Um, uh, so maybe, for example, people um, uh, will become more aware of the inherent immorality of something like murder when a major murder case is actually brought about. And so therefore we start to see society develop out of these different conventions that are uh, created on an ad hoc basis. The social environment will still play a key role in the creation of these moral um, conventions, but rather than them spawning prior to an event, what they do is they occur as a reaction to an event. So what conventionalism does is place the emergence of these moral values to the aftermath of some uh, key event that takes place rather than the um, prior than to exist prior to these key events that take place. These are all different theories that we can uh, talk about and you could maybe have the opinion that you could actually accept for more than one of these. You could argue that there are a combination of all four of these different ideas that create the kind of cultural moral values and moral societies that we actually grow into and develop to this day.